Here we, uh, <coughs> this week, excuse me, <coughs> we're learning Parshish Kitabo. Bahayat Kitabo ala Oritz. We're talking about when, and the Jewish people come to the land of Israel, so Moses commands them, or God tells them <coughs> through Moses that they have to <coughs> bring what's called the first fruits, and also they have to bring what's called Meiser. So let's, Maaser, one tenth. Let's see, here we go. Let's look at the, the just in a general way, the commandments that are in this week's Torah portion. Parshat Kitavo, there are eight, com, not, uh, six commandments. Six commandments in this week's Torah reading. Six commandments. Three of them are positive commandments. Three of them are prohibitions. Here we have, first of all, the first positive commandment, a positive commandment to read Bikurim. When you bring the first fruits, your first fruits, you have to <coughs> bring the first and the best fruits of <coughs> a, a, only in Israel, in the land of Israel. And you have to bring these fruits and then you have to make a declaration. And we'll see what that is. We're going to learn the Torah portion soon. We'll see. It's a beautiful declaration. And we read it also on um, Passover. Passover, in the night of Passover, we read this over because it's talking about how we're thankful to God that he took us out of Egypt and he brought us to this holy, amazing land. There's a whole procedure of how you do it. You put the, the fruits in a, in a beautiful basket you're supposed to bring on your shoulder and you bring it to the, to the holy temple and you make this whole declaration. A positive commandment. To do something similar, something similar, you also make a declaration when you bring Miser. Miser, and here it says this is talking about the, um, the only on the years where you also take what's called Miser Oni. After, years, there's what's called, you have to give a portion of your food twice every seven years. In the third year, in the sixth year, you give a big portion of your produce to the poor. And the year after that, namely the fourth year and the seventh year, so you make this declaration when you bring your regular miser, your tenth, your uh, tithe of your produce to the Holy Temple. Okay, so we have the declaration you have to make when you... Um, when you bring the first fruits, this is only in the time of the temple. And when the first fruits came, and then you also had to make another one. This was, this was done, the first one was done every year. And this was done only on twice in seven years, twice every seven years. Negative commandment, not to eat Miser Shani. Miser Shani is a portion that you take up to Jerusalem uh, five times every seven years. Five times every seven years, you take up to Jerusalem and you eat it up in Jerusalem. Five times, six times, five times, four times, and every seven years. So one of the seven years is the Shemitah year. Then you don't have any, it's not yours. And two of those years you give it to the poor, and four of them you give to you take up to Jerusalem and you have to eat it in Jerusalem, but you're supposed, you're supposed to eat it in a way of plenty. Number, in a, this, in a <clears throat> negative commandment, not to eat miser shani impure. Negative commandment, not to take miser shani. You have to eat it in Jerusalem. You can't take miser shani or its value like other foods, but rather you have to, you're not allowed to use it for anything except for eating. You can't give it for burial stipulations. Meister Shani. So when you have, if you're, if you're a farmer or if you buy fruit from Eretz Israel, you have to really take out three portions. You have to take what's called truma that you give to the coin. You have to take out Meister. That's a tenth that you give to the Levite, and then you have to take what's called Meiser Shani or Meiser Oni. Just, we talked about that. Twice every seven years, 
it's Meiser only you give to the poor, and four times every seven years, it is Meiser Shani, that you take up to Jerusalem and you eat it, much plenty, and there's all sorts of laws about how you can redeem it, and you don't have to take it up, you can take up the, the value of it, money, and then you can buy things in Jerusalem. It's a beautiful command because the Jerusalem is filled, the whole city is filled with people uh, eating and uh, rejoicing. Okay, you can see this, it's a complicated law. It's called Meiser Shani. Then we have positive commandment, to walk in the ways of God, like it says, Bahalachta bidrachav. And it's the same way that God is merciful, you have to be merciful, the same way that God is kind, you have to be kind, same way that God is honest, you have to be honest, and etc. And those are the six commandments that are in this week's Torah portion. And now let us have a look at the portion itself. Here we go. Let's have a look at our Torah reading. Here we go. Oh. And it will be when you come to the Holy Land that God, your God, gave you. Then Nachala, and you will, Nachala, I'm sorry, they gave you for a portion, for an inheritance. And you will conquer it and you will dwell in it. Rashi says, Magid comes to tell you, Shalom is Bikurim. That even if you do settle, and it took them sep, took them 14 years to conquer the land of Israel. When they went in with Joshua, it took them seven years to conquer the land from the inhabitants, evil inhabitants, the, the seven nations, 31 kings. And it took them seven years. And then it took them another seven years just to divide and settle on the lands that each tribe took his portion, his place. So it says, even if you happen to plant something and the fruits grew, and again, this is only taken from the seven fruits that Israel is praised by. Namely, grapes, grapes and pomegranates and dates and figs and olives and wheat and rye. So as you take those fruits, up to the Holy Temple. But even if you happen to have, in those first 14 years, I mean, obviously they must have eaten something. So even if you did plant and there did grow up these different fruits, you did not bring them until after seven years. Magi the Thomas tell us, you are not obligated to bring the first fruits until they conquered the land and divided it up. Let's look at the Balaturim. Very interesting here. Kitavo, when you come to the land of Israel. Remember what we learned last week? What was the last week? The end of last week's Torah portion. I talked about the three commandments of regarding Amalek. To remember what Amalek did to us, not to forget, and to destroy Amalek. Three commandments. Not to forget Amalek, to actively remember Amalek. Some people say that means to say something, talk about how bad he was, to think about how bad he was, and to destroy him whenever possible. Remember, we learned about that. Well, here it says, right after the, the end of last week's Torah portion, so it says, Ki tavo, kativ, it says above, Tim Amalek, you must wipe out the memory of Amalek. And it says, it says, when you come into the land of Israel, limchot et Amalek, we have to remember to destroy the memory of Amalek, to remember, to destroy any mention of him. And there's him, Miad immediately when he comes into the land of Israel. Al Zeh, because of the fact that he wanted to delay the Jewish people coming to the land of Israel. And this has been throughout history. He was the one that told the Egyptians that the Israelis ran away. He was Amalek, was the one that told Lovan that Yaakov ran away. Therefore, it comes to tell us this law of the Bikurim, of the first fruits, that it mentions over here, Arame Oveiravi. In the first fruits, we'll see what the declaration is. So there was an Arami, that, which is referring to Lavan. Lavan 
wanted to destroy our father. Remember, Yaakov, he, Yaakov fought with his angel, right? So it was called Yisrael. So he, he went down into, <clears throat> uh, Yaakov got, uh, was with all of his children. That was with B'nai Yisrael. And that was the beginning of all of the Jewish people. Well, he fled with all of his children from um, Lavan. From Lavan. Lavan was the father of, of Leah and Rachel. Is, uh, so he, he, Lavan wanted to kill Yaakov, which would have meant he was trying to destroy all the Jewish people. So it says, uh, Lavan, Arami, Oviravi, wanted to destroy our father, because that's the idea, same thing as Amalek. Amalek is a nation that just wants to destroy the Jewish people. Ki tavo, ki ola laminyan. Ki is in the language of Lamed. The word ki is 20 and 10 is 30. This is the letters of the Tavo is letters Avot, the forefathers, Aleph, Beit, Vav, Alavot. And this is a drush to tell you that the Jewish people are never less than 30 tzaddikim, 30. There's never less than 30 Jews who have the same self-sacrifice as Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they're considered to be like the forefathers. They are the ones that save us. Ba that's the Balaturim. Let's learn a little bit of the Or HaChayim, Rabbi Chaim ben Atar. The Balaturim is Yaakov ben, calls Yaakov Balaturim. Was the, the, uh, he, he wrote the tour. Uh, there, was, there was the, the preceder of the Shulchan Aruch, divided it says vahaya, the word haya always means happy. Right? When it says vayahi, it means something bad. And vahaya means something good. This tells you that only the only way you can really be happy is if you settle in the land of Israel. Like it says, like it says when Mashiach, of course, who's going to bring all the Jews to, Egypt, to Israel? Excuse me. Only Mashiach. So that's what it says. Az Yom then will be filled with joy our mouth. This is the land that God gave us. Let's see the Or HaChayim. All the commentaries are really very beautiful, but time is limited. So we have to understand my Gezira Tukatuv. Im Lakachat, what exactly are we supposed to do? If it, the, what is it, what is the Torah telling to tell us that, look, it says, and it will be when you come to the land of Israel that God gave you, and you inherit, and you settle in it, and you take the first fruits of the land that God gave to you, and you put them in. It's not giving a commandment. But Lakachton is telling you, and, and you should, and you go, and you will go to the land. Okay, so what, that's what he's trying to say. What exactly is the point? Why doesn't it say, it should say, and you should take, and you should take, in a way of a commandment. Here it's telling like a story, and you take, and you. So it says, we have to understand, it should have said, it should say, you must take from the first fruits, because this is the beginning of the commandment. But what it seems that the, where exactly does the commandment begin? Does it begin that if you take first fruits, then you have to make this declaration? Huh? Is, is there a commandment to take the fruits? Or maybe this is the commandment, it's just the declaration, which seems to be the language. So it says, Nira, Sukhavana, Sukhazuva, it seems that what it's trying to say, the Torah is trying to say is like this. Shiyatzav Hashem Dalit Mitzvahs. That here, God is commanding four things. One, that you should know in your heart, not with your power 
And now with your, uh, how do you say, energy and success, did you come to inherit the land of Israel? But it comes from God. Very important. The Orachayim is saying this, right? The Orachayim is saying this, what, 250 years ago. So this is before the Zionists, before this. You have to know that you come to the land of Israel, the land of Israel, you did not conquer it. You, you fought, you worked, you did everything, but it's still, it's a, the whole thing is a big, amazing, miraculous gift from God. Boom, that's what it says, Hashem Elokecha Nasan Lecha. It says that God, your God, he gave you. Right, the Jews had to fight for four, for seven years and against the incredible odds. And they, they won. So they could think, well, I mean, we did it. You know, we did it. They said, don't think that. Don't think that. Of course, it's true that you did it, but don't pat yourself on the back because you, you have to give all the credit to God. Not an easy thing. That's why the Jews didn't want to come to the land of Israel in the first place. In the time of Moses, remember, with the spies and everything, because they, they knew that if they went to the land of Israel, they would forget God. So God is saying, okay, you know, you're, you're right, 100%. There is definitely that, that risk. And it's very commendable of you to, you know, to be worried that you don't want to lose God. But it's, you know, the, the, the results, the conclusion that you came is the wrong one. You shouldn't say, oh, because I might forget God. So therefore, I'm not going to go in. I mean, that could be good if it, was, if it was optional. But here it's not optional. God is not saying do it if you want. God is saying, go into the land of Israel and take over the land of Israel, right? And you can say, oh, I don't want to forget you, God. And I, so God will say, good, you know, then don't forget me. But you have to go in. You know, what if I go in and I forget you? God said, I'm taking the risk. You have to be a man. You can't stay in the desert and live like a baby, just like an incubator. So, so first of all, you have to go in the land of Israel. You have to take it over, but you have to know clearly that it's God that gave it to you. But Diktak Loma, that's what it says, Hashem Elokecha, your God. In order that you accept on yourself the king of the universe, that he should be your king, that's why he's giving you the land. Not just in a general thing, he's the God of all the Jews and the Jewish people. You have a personal, in addition to that, a personal intimate relationship with the creator of the universe. That's number one. Number two. You have to drive out all of the inhabitants. If there's anything in the land of Israel which <coughs> separates you from total ownership, nevertheless, you goresh oyev Hashem yartzel. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, made a mistake. I'm sorry, Agam Shiyeshlo Dover Amaspiklo, even though you have sufficient in the land to take care of yourself. You don't need that land where the non-Jews live. Nevertheless, drive the non-Jews out of your land. That's what it says, Virashta. Right? Like we have nowadays with the, the Palestinians, they call themselves the Palestinians, or we call them the Palestinians, right? And they're in the land. We can get along without that land. Who knows who needs the land? It says you can get along without the land. Right, yeah, very good. But even more, you can you have to get along without your enemies. They're just going to be trouble for you all the time. So it says you have to drive them out, even though they make peace with you and they're nice guys and everything. Let them go somewhere else. It's not this is this is the holy land. Number three, the dwelling, the land, and the, living in Israel itself is a mitzvah on its own. It's not officially a mitzvah like one of the 613 commandments, but there's, it, we can say in a way there's absolutely nothing in any of the commandments that's comparable to living in Israel. I mean, the whole entire land is holy and it's only for the Jewish people. It's like a big, huge, holy temple. And there's so many commandments that can't be done at all uh, outside of Israel. And there's some opinions that say that all the commandments that are done outside of Israel are have not got the same uh, uh, the quality as if they're done in Israel. There's some people that say that all the commandments are only relevant in Israel. Outside of Israel, all the commandments are uh, 
are only from the rabbis. The, the law is not like so, but the, the opinions that say that are very, very uh, 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 powerful and valid opinions. The mitzvah yeshiva or it's Therefore, there is a very, very important to be in the land of Israel. Number four, Raviz, Havas Bikorim, the main commandment, you have to bring the first fruits, like it says, Vilakachta, etc. Take the first. I'd like to read the Kliyakra, but it's just simply too long. We won't read enough. Let's go. Tayasakani. You should know when you come into the land of Israel that God. When you come to the land of Israel, that God swore to give your forefathers. Therefore, a rabbi say that a person that that a God swore to your fathers. What about a convert? Now, a convert, according to Judaism, is a hundred percent Jew, hundred percent Jew. But, but his background still prohibits him from saying that God swore to our fathers, because this non this convert. His forefathers were not Jews. Shagir, maybe it says that a gear, a convert, he brings first fruits. He lives in Israel. He has land. He's a farmer. And he has beautiful figs and, and dates and pomegranates. So he brings them to the holy temple. But he cannot say the whole declaration. Why? Because he cannot say that God promised it to our fathers. Because he, it's not his father. He's a hundred percent Jew, but he's, his parents were not. So we cannot say this and say true. But, but when a non-Jew prays, not a non-Jew. I'm sorry. When a convert, when a convert prays, he says, Hashem elokeinu, eloke avoteinu. He says the God of our fathers. Why? Because in this case, we rely on the inheritance that from Abraham. That all of the, the 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 children of Abraham are called. Therefore, Abram was called Av Hamon Goyim. So true, he's Yitzchak and Yaakov were not his forefathers. Yes, yeah, Yitzchak and Yaakov. But unusually, Abraham was because it says that Abraham is the father of all of the non-Jews. And here we're talking about literally all of the non-Jews. Not all the non-Jews, of course, are not Jews. But the, Abraham is the father in the sense that he is his, his job was to teach all of them about the oneness of God, about all the non-Jews, that God is one. They shouldn't worship people or idols or things like this. But on the other hand, he's also the father of all of the converts, anyone who converts to Judaism. So we say that, yes, he's, his forefathers were not Yitzhak and not Yaakov. He has joined the Jewish people. He's 100% Jew just like Moses was, but he's no connection with Yitzhak and Yaakov, but with Abraham he does. Good. You should take from the first fruits that you bring from your land that God gave to you, and you put it in a, a special basket, and you go, a beautiful basket of your choice, and you go to the place that God chose to dwell his name there. And as the Rebbe brings a very interesting thing, he brings from the brother of the Maharalmi Prague. And he says over there, why is it that doesn't say the name Jerusalem clearly in, in, in the Torah, in, in the five books of Moses? Why doesn't it say you take it to Jerusalem? Why not? God could have said it. Why does it say the place where God commanded? In fact, it's referring to Jerusalem. That's the fact. It is referring to Jerusalem. Why doesn't it say it clearly? So he says over there a very interesting thing. He says that, yes, it is referring to Jerusalem, but it's coming to tell you a hint that anybody who lives anywhere in the world and their heart is to come to Jerusalem with Mashiach, and that's why we face Jerusalem no matter where we are in the world. If you live in Russia, you live in China, you live in America, you face Jerusalem because your heart and your mind is supposed to be. So he says, if you do that, then you are in the place, that you are in the place that God chose to make his name dwell there. And this, if you're thinking, of course, every Jew has to be in, in, in Israel. 
and the Holy Temple is only in Jerusalem. But and that's only when Mashiach comes. Until Mashiach comes, only Mashiach is going to bring all the Jews to the land of Israel. Because until the temple is really built, <clears throat> as Israel is not in full, full force. And also, the Mashiach is going to be the only one that's going to draw all the Jews back to Israel. That's according to all opinions. All opinions. Nobody disagrees with the Rambam. Nobody of his stature, maybe in the last hundred years or something, people, but no, no one any ever even thought to go against, in this, in this detail, the, the only Mashiach is going to bring the Jews back to Israel. So that's what he's saying. If you are outside of Israel, but your heart and your soul is to Israel, and you're thinking about Mashiach bringing all the Jews to Israel, and you want to go out, so it says, then you are in the place where God chose. Not to the degree you can't bring sacrifices there, but nevertheless, you're in the place where you should know that you're in the right place. You're in the place where God chose. That's what he says. <clears throat> Even more, he says, that only a person who's desire to be in Jerusalem, in other words, if you physically are in the land of Israel, but you have no desire to be in the place where God is, you're just in Israel. You live in Israel. You live in there. The, there you are. He says, then that person is not really living in Israel. The person who lives outside of Israel, that's what he says. The person living outside of Israel and he's longing for Mashiach to take all the Jews back to Israel, he is much more in Israel than the person who's there and could, doesn't care anything about Mashiach or bringing Jews. Or anything. Okay, that's his opinion. But it seems pretty clear that the Lubavitcher Rebbe agrees with him. It's a sikh of the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Rashi. Rashi says you should take the from the first, from the first of your fruits of the land. From the first fruits. It says low call You don't have to bring all of the fruits. She ain't call, and also you don't have to bring all of the uh, all of the, uh, the the different types of fruits. She ain't call a peros chayavim bebikorim elashivas aminim bilavad. You only have to bring an example, some the best of your fruits, and not all the different types of fruits. If you have pears and you know beautiful apples and peaches and plums and all sorts of really nice fruits, you don't bring those. There's only the seven fruits that Israel is. Praised by, like it says, Khan, Eretz, and it says later on, Eretz Chita Usaora Gepen Utein Arimon. We're going to see that later. No, it says, it says, no, not later. Before, the early. Malahala, just like before, is talking about the seven types that the Eretz Israel is praised by. Also, here it's talking about the seven fruits that Eretz Israel is praised by. Zait Shaman Udavash, like it says, Ten. It doesn't say that over here. It says, "It says, um, what do you have to bring? You have to bring." It says, "Zayt shemen." It means not that you have to bring the olive oil. You have to bring olives that are filled with oil, and you have to bring honey. What type of honey? In this case, the honey means several different things. Honey sometimes means anything sweet. And honey is, means uh, honey of bees. But here, honey is talking about honey that comes from uh, dates, date honey. When a person goes inside of his field, this is Rashi, and he sees a beautiful fig, and he, um, and he ties around it a, like a, a ribbon for a sign. And he says, this is going to be for the first, first fruit. This I'm going to bring up to God for the Holy Temple. <laughs> Let's do a little bit of the Ramban. This is more law. He brings more law. Lakach to me pre. going to bring the first fruits. Vatikach me rishis. You have to bring from the first fruits that you bring to the house from the land that God gave to you. And God commanded, you should take these fruits from your field. And you should make this declaration and bring them to into your house. And then you put them in a special vessel that is uh, your own, whatever, a nice basket or something that you can bring it to the Holy Temple, the base of Bechira, the, the house where God chose, the Holy Temple. 
but it doesn't say how much. You can even bring just one little small fruit from each and every one of the four of the seven types. And this will exempt the whole entire field. <clears throat> like it says, just like in Truma, one little grain of wheat exempts the whole entire. It says, you should go to the place where God chose. According to the simple meaning, it means is, is warning. You should be careful not to bring Bikurim from any of your gates. Shenivchar only from the holy temple. Kikamoshi is here. Just like you're not allowed to make sacrifices outside of the holy temple. So also the same thing with these first fruits. You're not allowed to bring them, these first fruits, anywhere except for the temple. But it's an obligation after the Jews began this obligation. Now, of course, we don't have it because we don't have a temple. To bring this whole after they conquered and divided up the land of Israel immediately. That's what it means you should go to the place where God chose to make his name there. Where is this the holy temple? But one second. When the Jews came into the land of Israel, there was no holy temple in Jerusalem. It was 440 years until the holy temple was built in Jerusalem from the time the Jews entered the land of Israel. So it took them 14. 15 years to divide up the land. It says then the Torah, the, the, the temple, it was a temporary, uh, like, a, like, the, like the tabernacle. It was in a place called Gilgal. But then afterwards, after they conquered the land, then they built the holy temple in a place called Shiloh. And Shiloh, after they divided it up, was it going Shiloh. And Beit Olamid, when it was in Shiloh, and then like 30 something years after Shiloh, Shiloh was destroyed. The Eli, and then the, the temple moved to, the, to Nob and to, um, to uh, what's the place called? Yeah, forgot. Okay. And Beit Olamid, that was in Shiloh and in Jerusalem. Givon, Obeid Olamid, Vishama. Yomru had said, Ki uh, Bamot Asurin, the Bamot are forbidden in these two times. Okay, Bamot, we talked about this before. It used to be that people could make like free will offerings in their backyard. They built, you could build a little altar in your backyard and, and you could sacrifice uh, free will offerings there. It says, when was this? In the time when they were in the desert, not. But when they came to the land of Israel, the first 14 years, yes. And then after, they went from um, to Nov and to Gibbon, then they could. They could make individual sacrifices, but because there was, there was no Shiloh and there was no Holy Temple, so they couldn't bring Bikorim. You couldn't bring Bikorim on your private altar that you built in your backyard. So Ulam and Mashikatu was says, Rashi's Bikur Ad Mascha Tavi Bais Hashem Elokecha. Lo Korvo Ba'oel Oba Mishkan. You can't bring it in a tent or in the tabernacle, but in Shiloh that was made from stone and in Jerusalem, you could bring first fruits. So one of those, in just a short way, when the Jews were in the desert, and when they came into the land of Israel and 14 years after they entered into Israel in Shiloh, and then, <clears throat> what is it? After Shiloh was destroyed, some, what is it? 57 years or something like that afterward, when they built the first temple, King Solomon built the first temple as only in the first temple and in Shiloh could they bring the Bikorin. But in the other places, they could not because it wasn't a permanent place. <clears throat> but on the other hand, when those, there, were, there was Shiloh and Jerusalem, they could not make free will offerings in their backyards if they wanted to. But in these other, in Gilgal and in Givon and in Nov, they could. Okay, Baal 
Vlakakta the Gamatria Vlakakta is the Gamatria Shiva Taminim. I knew all these Gamatrias. The word Vilakakta is the Gamatria Bi Shiva Taminim. May Reshit, Reshit the Gancha, Kodesh Israel. Who is the Reshit? The Jewish people. The Jewish people are the first fruits of God, the first of God's uh, grains. It says that even a child that knows how to speak Torah, he is the first fruits. The, the, as soon as a child knows how to speak, he's like the first fruits. You have to teach him to say words of Torah. You have to give him to, to God. In other words, he should start learning and saying words of Torah. That's what it says. The ray sheet you should take and give to God. The first fruits. And Gimel. You should come to, okay, so what did you do? Take the coin, you take the, the first fruits, put them in a basket, come to the coin that is in those days, and you say to him, we'll have to do this quickly. I am saying today to God that I've come to the land that God commanded to our fathers to give us. <clears throat> and the coin will take this basket from his hand and he'll put it in front of the altar of God. And then you say, in front of God, your God. And this is what we say also in the night of the Haggadah of Pesach. An Arami, this was Lovin, Oved Avi, wanted to try to destroy my forefathers. The Yerid Misraima, and they went down, Yaakov and his sons went down to Egypt. They survived Lovin, but afterwards they had to go down to Egypt. The Yagar Sham, and they dwelled there, the Mesei Ma'at, only, right? The, 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 it says 70 people went in. But Yisham the Goy Gadon, they became, in the course of the 210 years that they were in Egypt, they became millions and millions of Jews. Millions. According to some opinions, there was about 3 million Jews that got out of Egypt. And that there were four times as much that remained back in Egypt. So according to that, there was like 15 million Jews altogether. In any case, they became a huge, huge nation. They, they were in Egypt, the Yorei Watano, and the Egyptians, they tortured us, the Yanunu, and they made us suffer, and they gave us hard work, Avodah Kasha, and we cried out to God, the God of our fathers, and God heard our voice, and he saw our suffering, and he saw our torture, and he saw the pressure that we were under, and God took us out of Egypt. We're saying this is what you say in the Holy Temple, right? It's worthwhile to be a farmer just to be able to go to the Holy Temple with your fruits and say these, say this. And God, but we say it every Passover, every Passover, we say it in the Passover Seder. Have a look. And God took us out of Egypt with a powerful hand, with an outstretched arm, and with tremendous awe, and with miracles, and with great signs. And He brought us into this place. And he gave us this land, a land that is flowing milk and honey. Land that is filling milk. This place says this is the base of Migdash, says Rashi. And he gave us this land, talking simply, the land of Israel, gave us the land of Israel. And now, behold, I have brought my, the first my fruits, <clears throat> the fruits of the land that... <clears throat> You gave me, God, and I put it in front of God. You put it in front of God, your God, and you should bow down in front of God, <coughs> your God. This tells you that you take it after it's already, uh, the coin lifts it up. You grab the coin when he's saying it, and you lift it up also. You have to lift up together with the coin. And I rejoice with all the good that, that God, you should, and you should rejoice. You should rejoice with all the good that God has given you and your house, you and the levy and the convert, which is among you. He says the convert reads, brings, but he doesn't say, like we said before, because he can't say aboteno. That's what we learned before. Also, the levy also has to bring bikurim. <clears throat> If he has plants in his cities, because the Levites were given 48 cities, they should all rejoice together. This shows that what? 
from here it says that you don't say this bikurim in the time, they only say it except when it's a joyous time. When from the holiday of Shavuot, Shavuot until the holiday of Sukkot, then a person gathers up all of his fruits and his wine and his oil. But from the holiday of Sukkot and onward, you do bring your first fruits to the holy temple. You do that, bring them, but you don't say this. You don't say it because the, the, that's the like the, the warm time that you and the levy and etc. And that's what we just finished learning. God should hope that make it that his first fruits, fruits, the Jewish people will all be in the holy temple and we'll all be rejoicing together with Mashiach now. Have a good day, everyone. With Mashiach now, we'll be again at meet again tomorrow at 8 15 in the morning. 8 15 tomorrow morning for Hasidut. We're learning a beautiful mimer from Lakuti Torah. An amazing sicha from the Rebbe about uh, this commandment of bringing first fruits and how the Jewish people are the first fruits and how to be happy. Have a good day with Mashiach now.